One of the most common questions I get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did for our viewers on YouTube is create a free mentorship course that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they get started. But please take note that there is limited seating every single week. So please reserve your spot at myinvestingclub.co. Link is in the description. That's the first time I've ever heard that. Well, that's nice. I did you guys hear that? It just did you guys hear that? You guys did? That's the first time I've ever like heard that. They probably they probably have they probably got too got too many. Oh crap, I didn't record and they need to that's more that's now a reminder for everyone. Oh, I didn't hear recording in progress, so Anyway, but now that we're recording, I'll re-say what I just said. Um, my internet went out today, so if, if this stream kind of ends or there's two parts, I'm sorry, guys. Zoom update, zoom to the moon. All right, so yeah, anyway, let's get started. And I mean, this was a this was a definitely a different week out of out of all the other weeks. So that was pretty uh, just more more balanced this week, and we'll go over it. Anyway, um, so let's pull it up. Now, so today I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to do this webinar on adapting and changing because it's a, it's a very, it's an eternal thing, you know, like be, being a trader, you, you're always adapting, right? Whether it's like big changes, like, you know, when, when OTC shut down and you have to do this major change and, and, and start trading on the NASDAQ or, you know, like, you know, any kind of, you know, any kind of minor change to, you know, you know, longs kind of have control this week, right? Or, you know, like, oh, like the death candle setup really isn't working or the death line, you know, really isn't kind of working. You know, from major changes to minor changes, like when when you're a trader, like you have to adapt, right? It's and and everyone always says like adapt or perish, adapt or perish, adapt or perish. And it's frustrating when you want to be consistent, but you're you're constantly having to change. And so I kind of want to unpack a whole lot of that because it's 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 one of those statements where you just say adapt or perish, you know, like kind of a it, it's very open blanket, and so I want to you know uncover some of those blankets, I guess. Give my thoughts on that. So anyway, we're going to talk about like how to adapt, how to change, like what what's too much of a change, and all that kind of stuff. And then my screen's a little dirty. All right, so let's get going. So if this is your first, if this is your first webinar, welcome. This is kind of a standalone webinar. Like I've, I've, I've kind of touched on this a little bit on probably almost every webinar I've done, but now I'm doing one so I can point to it. Um, so this is going to be one of those. There is no prerequisite webinar, so you can just watch this one cleanly. Um, <laughs> I, th I thought there'd be some people that uh, that got a kick out of that. Um, so anyway. We're going to be going over the market sentiment as I do every single week. Uh, then we'll go into all of the movers of the week and kind of identify good spots for, for entries or exits or, you know, depending on your thesis, what kind of risk levels were good and stuff like that. So I'll ask you guys to think of some pickers to go over this week. Uh, then we'll get into adapting and changing and Q&A is open throughout the whole webinar. So if you have a question, just go ahead and ask and I'll, you know, if I miss it, post it again later. And I'll probably catch it. All right, so let's get going. No time to waste. All right, so let's pull up the spy here. Um, the cues, that's what I meant. So, all right, so last week, right, we, we saw this big, strong, positive bounce on the cues, right? We saw, we started to see this. This, this strong pop up right here. This I think this was the day, right? When was my last webinar day? It was what 13th? Yeah, so it was like right here, right? It was yeah, this strong bounce day, right? We were it was right here on this strong bounce day, and so you know we were kind of like I, I I was kind of talking about how this is like a strong positive bounce off of, and it happened at the same time as the Bitcoin flash crash that we had, and. Last week, I kind of brought up the idea of like major market like events or triggers. I kind of brought up that concept where we were talking, where I, not we were talking, but like I introduced the idea about how, you know, like a, a big, a major market event, like, 
like GameStop or like, you know, like maybe a Bitcoin crash or something like that might, you know, like set, you know, it just, it sets, it sets the wheel in motion for another direction a lot of times. And so I thought that that could be a possible possibility there with the Bitcoin flash crash, but it ended up being a flash crash, right? It, 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 it bounced. I don't even know what Bitcoin price is at right now, but I know it, it didn't just fall to its demise. So it wasn't a, like a crash, but, you know, and, but on that day we were seeing bounces like left and right all over the place. Um, and I said that like, we needed to maintain this 320 level on the queues, the 405 level on the SPY. And that, that I thought it would take a little bit of consolidation, a little bit of proof to prove that we can hold on to these levels. And if we could hold on to these levels, um, that we could have a nice move up. And if we didn't retest or didn't have any consolidation, I think that we would have a, you know, kind of a choppy move up with pseudo confidence, kind of like we had a couple of weeks ago, right? When, when we were talking, you know, we kind of had, when we kind of had like this, this, this move up, it was just, you know, it was just too fast. And then like, it was just choppy, right? We couldn't, nobody, nobody had any confidence there. And so basically I thought 320 was the level that needed to hold for the cues. And the, the cool thing is, is that we dipped, like this was the day where we dipped, you know, we gapped way under 320. And on that day, that's the level that reclaimed. And, and that really showed me that, hey, I was right on that level. That was the level that we needed to, you know, like this is where, this is where it all happened, right? It all happened right here at 320. That was the, you know, this is where the, that huge reclaim kind of came in on this like 320. This was the support, the major support that held. Um, yeah, thank, thanks for giving him that. And this, I mean, this kind of showed it right there. This just, you know, on the big gap down day, you know, we, we got, we climbed back over 320. We were going to dip back under and the market said, no, we want to be above 320. And so this was the level here. And I think something similar happened on the slide. Hey guys, my name is Tosh Bradley. I'm one of the head mentors and moderators at My Investing Club. If you have any questions about getting started in trading, getting started in MIC, MIC in general, text me at 213-458-5997. This is not a robot. It is me directly on the other end of my business line and uh, we'll get you in the club. We also have special promotions going on that I can get to you depending on your trading needs. Hit me up. Back to the video. Kind of, kind of right there with four. The spy didn't dip as hard, but so it's, you can't reclaim a level that you didn't dip under, but 405 was the level it held. So it's kind of saying that like these were the levels that needed to hold and they did on a big double bottom. And double bottoms are always, like longs always love to see double bottoms. When long C double bottoms, they they get super excited. Like it's it's a it's a confidence booster. It's 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 like a consolidation hold, right? And so, crap, my bad. That's not what I need to click on. And so we saw that, right? So we got that we got that that kind of that confirmation, and it's that's all. Like I I I the more confirmation for me, the better the. You know, as we're here at all time highs with inflation and tax fears looming, the more confirmation technically we can have, uh, the more comfortable I'll, I'll feel. But what do I think is next is, um, well, starting off, we're seeing a lot of bounces on a lot of the names, right? Like just, just look at, I mean, we can look at a little index here. ARC looks like this, right? Uh, that's, not, that's not what I wanted to, but yeah, it, we're holding BABA too, but. You know, kind of Tesla kind of looks like that. What were some of the other names that I did? Was it Netflix? Yeah, Netflix is kind of trying to hold on here. Like it's showing that we're trying to hold on to these bounces. Like what are some other beta names um, uh, that I had on that webinar? Uh, same ones. Anyway, I can't forget. But we're seeing a lot. Was it AMD? Yeah, like and, like we're starting to like we kind of held the the support here we dipped under and reclaimed back over so we're seeing a lot of that kind of positive positive energy where it's hey maybe if this is double bottom then like you know a lot of buyers might be saying hey this is a great price to buy a lot of these stocks right like if, if this is the bottom i love the risk reward here so as soon as longs can start to think and confidence can kind of change to where it's not like oh no this is going to be a breakdown and instead it's a well, maybe this is just a long-term double bottom and that sentiment and that idea that idea kind of switches over to maybe this is a good buy area. That's how confidence and sentiment starts to build and starts to stack. And, you know, 
I still think that the, the that there's some disconnect between you know the spy and the cues and all of the Momo stocks, but um, all of the all of the you know the the, the leading stocks I should just close this because I keep clicking on it. Um, all of those like leading all those leading stocks and Momo stocks they the the connect needs to come back, but it's you know we're we're looking in the right direction um, in the large cap land as far as um, I'm concerned, and I probably will do some swing study over the weekend. I don't know if I will be buying on Monday, but I mean, I, I'll i probably do some study and like see if, see what's out there, do some scans or something like that, just to see. And, you know, I haven't even been interested in doing that at all for weeks, for, for months, since February like 19th or something like that. Um, I haven't even been interested in like looking at all. Um, but, oh yeah, the market's closed on Monday. Um, I really don't know, Wes. I, I, I'm, I'm still looking for it. Uh, yeah, but so, you know, we'll see uh, how that plays out. But I am starting to look. Uh, I will be looking at some swing opportunities now. Just looking for some, just easing my way in, kind of what I'll be talking about, just ease in. But, um, you know, we're starting to see these recoveries off the bottom. That's always bullish. Um, but what we do need to see is the after effects of this bounce, right? What we, this is, I mean, the ultimate proof is like what happens after this bounce, like this reclaim off the bottom, this potential double bottom. Does it just kind of stuff right away? And what I mean by right away is in the next one, four weeks, right? Like that's the thing is like these large, um, these chocolates, these stocks are so beaten. It's going to take, it's not like a minute chart where you can just be impatient and get, you know, it's going to take a couple of weeks, but we're going to know in a couple of weeks if people are, you know, kind of ready to, you know, they want to continue the downtrend, like the, the confidence isn't there, or people start to see this as a good buying opportunity. And as far as I'm concerned, as far as like swing trading and large cap trading is going, as far as longs are concerned, you just need the market to be on your side to have a good time. You know, like you don't need the market to go up necessarily or like up, 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 up. You don't need that hyper bullish market to make money. But what you need is just, you just need the market not to be in the toilet. And right now, like we're recovering off of toilet land. So like that, that's, that's, that's basically my view on it. And I think that we're getting close. I think this is the closest we've been to kind of coming off of what I, what I call the bearish market for the last few weeks. So um, uh, I'm interested to see how, how we open up in the next week. But anyway, it's basically, we're, we need to see how this balance kind of continues to know if the downtrend, can, downtrend continues or not. Remember all of these, this is supposed to say charts. These charts have a hard path up, right? None of these charts look pretty. So like I said, it could take a few weeks, but here's the thing I wanna talk about. Um, basically the tech, tech stocks basically just crashed when on our last market crash, right? Now, the thing about, um, I think that the market is changing its dynamic a little bit in the sense to where just because we have so much more participants, we're starting to see, um, we're starting to see that like the like momentum stocks for the larger cap market can 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 change, right? Like it doesn't we like the whole the old Momo stocks might not necessarily be the Momo stocks that we see in 2021, like. They have been like, you know, the Teslas, the Neo, the Tiger, Tiger, JMIA. How are those charts right now? I wanna, I wanna look at those charts. Tiger, you know, JMIA, right? Um, God, what is the other one I just said? Um, Neo, that's oh, gonna follow Tesla. But yeah, like these were, and you know, were the Momo stocks, but maybe they're not, you know, maybe they aren't, right? They, it doesn't have to be, but, the, the Momo stocks um, that, you know, of the past don't necessarily have to be the Momo stocks of the future. That can change. And I think it very possibly could change. Like we could see, it all depends on sector. It all depends on what's hot. You know, like I, I think, you know, I mean, virtual reality names can, you know, that's just an example. Like that could be like a new thing for the market in 2021 or 2022 or, you know, and then it's all this, then it's all this different kind of tech, like maybe, you know, not cars and stuff it, or energy or green energy. It could be other things that drive the overall market, right? So what I'm talking about when I say this disconnect between, you know, like the, 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 
that the Momo stocks start to need to have better charts that match the SPY because I, I do think that the bullish market works the best when the SPY is charging and the Momo stocks are charging. What I'm trying to get through is it doesn't have to be the same Momo stock. So I'm currently on look for you know any kind of other Momo stocks, any kind of other Momo sectors that could potentially replace the old ones, right? Because that could definitely, you don't wanna be just waiting for Tesla to go back to all time highs because maybe it doesn't, right? Maybe other Momo stocks take the lead. And so we wanna keep an eye on potential new um, Momo stocks and sectors that could, you know, be, you know, whatever's matching with the SPY, whatever energy kind of flows off of that, that's, the, that's what we wanna keep track of as far as sentiment. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.